Finances are an integral part when running a business. Many businesses begin with finance contributed by their owners and the owner's family. If they start as an incorporated business, then the distinction between the owner's capital and the owner's loan is almost irrelevant. While if the business is incorporated or turns into one, then there are important differences between share capital and loans. In this case, share capital is more or less permanent and can give suppliers and lenders some confidence that uh, the owners are being serious and are willing to risk significant resources. What if the owner's friends and families do not themselves want to invest in the business, or perhaps they have no money to invest in it? Then the owners will have to look for outside sources of capital. Hello guys, it's Moses Manuel from Zeret Network, and in this video, we will look at short-term sources of finance for business. So short-term sources of finance are usually needed by businesses to run their day-to-day -day activities, things to do with payment of employees, inventory ordering, supplies, etc. And they include, number one, overdraft. So this is where your bank allows you to spend more money than you have, up to a certain limit. Overdrafts are the most important source of short-term finance available to businesses. They can be arranged relatively quickly and offer a level of flexibility with regard to the amount borrowed at any time while interest is only paid when the amount is overdrawn. This is how it works. The bank sets the limit, that is how much you can withdraw beyond what is in your account. Of course, this will depend on your income. So interest is going to be charged on the overdraft. The beauty of this arrangement is that it helps to overcome short-term deficit in cash flow during the normal business operations. The other advantage is that the borrower doesn't have to retain huge amount of cash in a bank, especially if no interest is being earned on the same. The challenge with this kind of arrangement is that the bank can end the overdraft without a warning, or it could, depending on the type and size of the bank, ask for security on such. Number two, short-term loan, which are loans for a fixed amount for a specified period, usually from the bank. The loan may have a specific purpose, such as purchase of an asset. It's drawn in full at the beginning of the loan period and repaid at specific time or in defined installments. Short-term loans are offered with a variety of repayment schedules. Often, the interest and capital repayments are predetermined. Short-term loans and overdrafts have relative advantages and disadvantages. A customer might ask the bank for an overdraft facility when the bank would wish to suggest a loan instead. Alternatively, a customer might ask for a loan when an overdraft would be more appropriate. So advantages of an overdraft of a loan include number one, the customer only pays interest when he is overdrawn. Number two, the bank is flexible to review the customer's overdraft facility periodically and perhaps agree to additional facilities or insist on reduction in the facility. Number three, overdrafts can do the same job as a loan. Bear in mind, however, that overdrafts are normally repayable on demand. What are the advantages of a loan? Both the customer and the bank know exactly what the repayments of the loan will be and how much interest is payable, which makes it easier to budget. Number two, the interest rate on loan balance is likely to be lower than the interest charged on overdrawn balances. Number three, the customer does not have to worry about the bank deciding to reduce or withdraw an overdraft facility before he is in a position to repay what is owed. Fourth, loans normally carry a facility letter setting out the precise terms of the arrangement. So the third source of finance is trade credit. Trade credit is a major source of short-term finance for a business. Current assets such as raw materials may be purchased on credit with payment terms normally varying between 30 to 90 days. Trade credit therefore represents an interest-free short-term loan. In a period of high inflation, purchase via trade credit will be very helpful in keeping costs down. Number four, leasing. So rather than buying an asset outright using available cash resources or borrowed funds, a business may lease an asset. Leasing is a contract between lesser and lessee for hire of specified assets selected from a manufacturer or a vendor. The leaser retains ownership of the asset. The lessee has possession and uses the asset on repayment of specified rentals over a period. Leases can be looked at as either operating lease, which in fact are short-term finances for non-current asset, and a finance lease or a long-term source of finance. The range of assets list is wide, including office equipment, company computers, cars, commercial, vehicles, etc. A company which owns its own premise can obtain finance by selling the property to an insurance company or a pension firm, for instance, for immediate cash and rent it back. This is what is referred to as sale and lease back. A 
company would raise more cash from a sale and leaseback arrangement than from a mortgage, but there are significant disadvantages. Such as number one, the company loses ownership of a valuable asset which is almost certain to appreciate over time. Number two, the future borrowing capacity of the firm will be reduced as there will be less asset to provide security for a loan. Number three, the company is contractually committed to occupying the property for many years ahead, which can be restricting. And last, the real cost is likely to be high, particularly as there will be frequent rent reviews. So I hope you've understood the lesson. In case of any question, do let us know. Feel free to share the video, like and subscribe and have a lovely day.